How's it going, Pokemon trading card game fans? Welcome back to another episode of Special Conditions, the TCG podcast, where we talk all things, you know, about the card game. Um, Special Conditions is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, in case you didn't didn't know. Today is Monday, September 16th, 2019. And I am your host, Adam Tuttle, joined by my co-host once again, Josh Brown. How are you? I'm doing great, Adam. If you don't know, now you know. Um, yeah, nice to be back. Hi, how's it going? We're going to talk some cards, man. Yeah, I, I cannot wait. On today's show, we're going to have our first look at short <laughs> shield and sword cards. See, I'm getting it messed up because I don't say shield and sword because that's right. how I'm used to saying it. Sword and shield. Um, we'll get familiar with some cards from Unified Minds. Mm-hmm. Well... Bayheim specifically. Okay. And then we've got a listener email to end it all off. Hey, how about that? It's going to be a fun show. How are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm excited, Adam, uh, as I always am. I like learning new things. I like talking about fantastic looking cards. Um, overall, I'm, I'm pretty stoked so far. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to how, have you back. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Good. I uh, I got some new some more sleeves okay so okay. i can actually finally get um my shiny set from hidden fates you know starting to be put away oh i can put away unified minds okay okay because currently it's just a stack of cards sleeves you mean the individual sleeves or the pages the pages the pages oh, sorry okay okay <laughs> i've already failed I'm like, Adam, you told me that's how how are you opening hidden fates without sleeves nearby? Uh I honestly I opened I opened my Insta Booster today mm-hmm. and pulled a Articuno Moltres Zapdos tag team trio, just like the basic form. Oh, okay. Not the rainbow full art. Not the rainbow one, no. Okay. Not again. Sure. <laughs> but it's just funny how like I pulled that one last week and I pulled this one this week. Right, right, right. Um But yeah, I was like clamoring for a, a, a a freaking sleeve. I was like, where is this? I need one. <laughs> How do you not I was have able to find one. one nearby at all times? Well, they all have Pokemon in them. Or they all have cards in them. So mm. I'm like, I can't take out this full art Whimsicott GX for this bird GX because it's just a normal one. Right, right. Hmm. Well. So did did you check out the, um, the new Shield and Sword cards um, that Pokemon.com you know- put up? No, I, I I briefly glanced at him and I figured that you'd tell me all about him, so I kind of wanted to wait. Well, so they're going to be in these boxes, and it's Sobble, Score Bunny, and Grookey, okay. and they're all like very basic. Um, and the way they did that, the way they did these boxes is you get one giant Zycan or Zamazenta or Zaishan. I don't know how you say it, but. <laughs> You, you get one big card, to say, man. and it's like this would be so cool if this is actually like the size of the card that you get to use. But who knows? Sure. But like I said, they're all pretty vanilla, basic cards. They don't do anything. They just kind of say like tackle for ten, for one energy. Okay. But I do like the way the new like style is because the energy symbols themselves are almost like a different shade of green or a mm. shade of blue or a shade of red. So they almost look a highlighted. Okay. It's really cool. Um, and each box, you know, caters to one specific starter. Right. And that one starter in each box is the promo. Okay. And then the other two are, I think, would probably just be hollows from the base set of Shield and Sword. Right, right, right. But you're getting, like, a promo, so it's a different art hmm. in each one. So they, like, force you to get each one. Right. In order to get these promo cards. Now, I have a question about this. So, yes. there's three starters, but there's only two of the... Are they legendaries or mythical? Uh, I think legendaries. Do we know? Okay. But there's only two of the legendaries. So, yes. if you buy... If you get two different boxes with the two different legendaries, the third one for the starter, do you have to get? Yeah, you get two of them. <laughs> okay, so that yeah, that's weird, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. It. I mean, they do stuff like this all the time because they're like, I think they know everybody's gonna get Scorbunny, but they're like, nah, well, some people might like Grookey and some people might like Sobble. So, oh, I'm Team Sobble all the way, man. 
Yes, same yeah. here. Okay, good. Get that score bunny out of here. Hyper exactly. little rabbit. I Ooh, can't wait to see what they evolve into. I know. I know. Stoked. Huh. Okay, so the big ones, you're just going to have to deal with getting a second one of one of them. Yeah. Mm, and so they reveal to them, but the card's almost completely blank, except for the attack. And on Zyxan, it says, Brave Blade, 230. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. Okay. Hmm. But we don't know what the energy cost is. Like, what? Oh. And it's and it's crazy, because it's like, maybe there is no energy cost. Interesting. But, you know, they they clearly doctored this up, because there's no energy, there's no typing there's no retreat resistance weakness so you know nothing about these pokemon but in the trailer at, from pokemon worlds where they sh- first showed these there's additional text like abilities that are on each of these and they're not there now so it's like why are you hiding this ability that you pretty much gave us you tease them at worlds and then you took them away if we already know that there's abilities attached to these, like, why take them away? Hmm. I don't know. I just don't understand it. I don't either. So what's the V on the cards for? Nobody after knows. The, after the name. Okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of like what they're doing, like, going into the new, the new, ser- the new series or the new, like, Shield and Sword set error just like this this sun and moon we got gx attacks Hmm. okay but gx and ex are the same ex you still take two prizes gx you still take two prizes only they have those gx attacks which created a new rule um these are pokemon v so again they're going to come with a new rule but they still you still lose two prizes if they get knocked out what's a prize so when you shuffle your deck, uh-huh. you draw seven cards, you both play down your basic, and then once you both have a basic, you take the top six cards and put them face down next to you, okay. and whenever you knock out a Pokemon, you take one prize. And when you take all six, you win the game. Oh. Gotcha. That's just a quick lesson. I'm sure you're going to ask like yeah, we'll more in depth that. on that later. Yeah. Okay. I, I only asked because I know you mentioned it last week, and I didn't stop you, and then I figured we might as well... Might as well ask you about it now, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into prizes at a later date. Yes, definitely. Hmm. And then on the Zamazenta, it says discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon, and it does 130 damage. Okay. A- again, no weakness, retreat cost, resistance, typing, nothing. Right. Hmm. And honestly, there's nothing on it to really give it away as far as like type wise sure so do you think this set is going to change how the game is played significantly it depends it depends on what comes out because when sun and moon came out there was already cards in format that were better than the sun and moon cards okay but as the format rotated and developed and grew the sun and moon cards became more relevant as time went on okay alolan muck is the better example when he came out all of your opponent's basic gx pokemon Mm -hmm. couldn't use abilities and Mm. so like that was big that was devastating sure and before that um there was uh, garbodor and garbodor if he has a tool attached all abilities get shut down except for his. So like that was the better Pokemon at the time. Mm-hmm. And then once rotation happened and that went away, Alolan Muck found its, its moment to shine. Hmm. Okay. And that happens with all, like a lot of these sets, like when black and white, this, the Pokemon TCG set first came out, there was almost like nothing good about it. There was like 90% of the the cards were all very vanilla. Okay. It was very like, 
oh, I evolved my Blitzel into a Zebstrika, and I attach my third energy, and I do 80 damage. Yes! <laughs> and you're just like, all these other cards are so much better. Right, right, right. And it was a weird set, too, because the only, like, really money card, if you will, was a full art um, Zekrom or Reshiram. Mm. Interesting. But Embor grew over time, and Embor said, like, you can dump as many fire energies from your hand onto your Pokemon as you like. As, mm. ma- as, as often as you as you like. So right. you had three energies in your hand, just throw them down. Mm. And eventually that came to light and became better as the format developed and grew again sure so what you're saying is it's hard to say how this is going to change the game yes especially because we don't know what the v stands for right we don't know if yes that you knock it out they take two cards but there might be trainer cards that can only be played when v v pokemon are in play Mm -hmm. forcing you to play pokemon that you can lose two prizes, you know, so you lose the game essentially faster. Right. But if there's if there's trainer cards that allow that work with the V, like almost like um like counter cards. Mm-hmm. In previous sets, there's been um oh, I don't I don't remember the exact card name, not off the top of my head. But if you had so many Pokemon with SP, which is like Charizard could be basic, Garchomp could be basic okay. in the card game. Okay. Um, if you had so many SP po- Pokemon, if your opponent played a ability, you could stop it with the trainer card from your hand. So it was the first card that allowed you to play it during your opponent's turn. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it's if if there are trainers that work with V Pokemon. I could see things getting interesting. Right, right, right. Uh, so have they revealed like how big this set is going to be? Do we have a release date for it? What do we know? Um, I believe it comes out in November. It's our November set. I just okay. don't know the exact date. Um, and on the bottom of Zamazenta, it says 202. Oh, okay. Hmm. So it's, it's a decent size set. Hmm. Not bad. And essentially, like we've only seen five cards from it right hmm i like it i like it um yeah i'm I'm excited do we know when in november by chance no no not off the top of my head no (laughs) why don't you know all the answers adam well i only know so much um (laughs) launch november 15th so alongside the the games okay Perfect. Well, at least that's where the collections will be available November 15th. Sure. So at least the collections will come out the 15th. Right, right, right. I don't know exactly, again, when the set comes out. It could be the 8th. I feel like I want to say the 8th. I want to say it's the 8th. Yeah. I'm sure they want to keep it kind of locked up as much as possible to prevent people from knowing about new Pokemon too early. Yes, because a launch of a new Pokemon game is a big deal. It's been a couple of years. Yeah, and they're, they've they've done so well at keeping everything under wraps and then giving us a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah, they've only shown off like what ten, fifteen Pokemon, maybe. Yeah, if that, and it's like, oh man, because they just gave us Cramorant and uh, Poltegeist. Oh god, that's so good. <laughs> that's so <Yes>. good. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, when they um, release a new game like this, a brand new generation, um, they usually have a new card set to go along with it, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. Yep. Does that card set usually include all of the new Pokemon that are in the game? or do Not they necessarily something? all of them. Okay. And they, they could be waiting, like, where we might get Zamazenta and Zykan in, like, this iteration Mm -hmm. we might get whatever the new the third middle pokemon is right the like the rayquaza and deoxys to the groudon and kyogre type deal sure so like they they definitely stagger the cards out Mm -hmm. or they might make 
a Zamazenten as I can in this one, and then in the next set they do two more. Right. But as just far as like all the other to. Pokemon, though, like not necessarily the legendaries, but just all the other. I'm sure ones. they'll find a way. I mean, there's 202 cards. Let's just say we allocate like 40 spots to trainers and special energies. Mm-hmm. That's still 160 Pokemon. Right. Or 162. They usually, so and they usually include around 100 new ones for each new generation. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Roughly. I mean. Anywhere from 80 to, like, 120. Yes. Hmm. And, and you know what I mean? They're going to put other Pokemon, too. Like, we're probably going to get Galar forms. Right. So we'll probably get the, the whole Zigzagoon line. Yeah, we better. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll probably get, like, a regular coughing to go with the Galarian wheezing. Yeah, yeah. That needs to happen. Ah, man, I'm so excited. Yeah. Pokemon's in a good spot right now. Yes, they are. Yeah. They're just they're just rolling around in money. <laughs> well, they've been doing that for decades now. It's, <laughs> it's going to be like, yeah. Hmm. Uh, what what amazing thing about Pokemon is that I I can't remember a time when anyone has ever said, "Oh, that franchise is dead." Right? Like, "Oh, that's it. They've peaked. No more." Like, it's just, it's perpetually up, it feels like. Yeah. Like, just, it, it doesn't stop going. It's just a, a, a train full of cash, just moving up a hill, dragging it along. Just and choo-choo. they're like, we don't think we can. We know we can. Yeah. We know we can. We know we can. Yeah. I mean, even when they make minor missteps and things, like, it, it never phases them. They just keep rolling on to the next thing. Exactly. <sighs> They're a wonderful company. They've... Yeah, I mean, even it comes to even go down to worlds like the quality of all of their products that they sell, like it's just phenomenal. Yeah, like I... all their deck boxes that they sell, like I've had some for years, and they still last. Like last at this point, they could just phone it in and still make as much money as they currently do, without question. But they don't like they they keep trying to push themselves. They keep improving on things. Everything is about just m- being better than the last. And well, yeah, they want to be the best there ever was, oh, and that's in business. Boy, they want to business the best there ever was. Boy, speaking of that, <laughs> not Adam, be the best. Uh, CNN running an article about Ash Ketchum finally becoming a Pokemon master was the weirdest thing I have ever read on the internet and it warms my heart to to so many lef- different levels. Yeah. Yeah. You you heard about it, right? I heard about it. I did not read it though. Okay, yeah. Ash Ketchum. Tell the, me about in, it. In the newest episode of Sun and Moon cartoon, um apparently wins the tournament and is crowned a Pokemon master for the first time in his 20 something plus year career. Yeah, 22 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> CNN Adam wrote an article about how big of a deal this was. Either one, it was a That's slow a news deal. day, or two, this Pokemon thing still has some legs. It does. And honestly, I feel they could pretty much do anything they wanted as far as with the new series. Because mm-hmm. we know that there's a new anime coming. Right. And it kind of, like the little trailer encompasses all of the starters mm-hmm. throughout all the gens. Right. And we we could see an era where we don't have Ash. Is he is he retiring? Are we getting a new protagonist? I mean, that would be cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe I, it's time. And then they could have the mascot switch over to Eevee. I, I feel Eevee like they've the wanted main... to do that for a long time now. Yeah. And it's like, Pikachu's already there. Pikachu already... Everybody knows who Pikachu is. It's time for Eevee. There are people that have never even, like, said the word Pokemon out loud that could see a picture of Pikachu and know that it's Pikachu. Yep. Even... I was I was at the fair um, yesterday, and there was Pikachus everywhere. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it. you can't avoid it. And why would you want to? Well, because it could electrocute you. Mm, good point. Um, no, these cards look great, Adam. I'm looking forward to that new set. Um, 
But that, that's still a couple months away. But for now, thankfully, there's hidden fates. <gasps> da, 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 <laughs> hidden fates. Um, yeah. Speaking of hidden fates, yeah. my pickup of the week is my brother traded me a shiny Quagsire uh-huh. and a Weavile GX. Ooh. What'd you trade? Oh, man. You're putting me on the spot. I don't remember. Uh, clearly, uh, nothing he you wanted, care about. I think he wanted a Giratina and... Yeah, a Giratina, Garchomp, tag team. He wanted that. Okay. And then he wanted a uh, Machamp, Marshadow, tag team, full art. Sure. And uh, one more thing. I think a couple of reverse holo trainers because mm. he's into the whole um, flex deck thing. Yeah, he is. I feel like yeah. I get along great with you, brother. <laughs> like bad. Yeah. Like I thought I was bad, but he's it's it's getting worse over there. Right. Yeah. Well, but I was like, you didn't tell me you have a Quax. I was like, you know that that's the deck I'm playing. And I've been sitting on just a lone whooper for so right. long. And I was like, I just need the shiny Quag. Yeah. Yeah. So I got it. The Weavile GX, that's also from Hidden Fates, right? Uh, no, that's from uh, Unified Minds. Unified Minds. Okay. I knew it was from one. Yes. Of the and so, okay. and so how Quags hire works is he moves water energies from the bench to the active Weavile GX moves dark energies from anywhere to anywhere else as often as you like during your turn. So similar concept, just Weavile GX is a GX Pokemon. Gotcha. And dark type Pokemon. There are multiple tag teams that are dark. Mm-hmm. You have Zora, Greninja, um, Tyranitar, Sableye, and then Umbreon, Darkrai. Right. So you have like so many options to just go big or go home. Mm-hmm. So I think that's like the next deck I really want to build. It's dark. And you also use Naganadel as well. Because mm-hmm. you absorb the energies just like Quagsire and then you just attack. Sure. Is the shiny Quagsire card, is that a full art or no? No. Okay. No, all the, yeah, all the, pretty much the shiny cards that are normal are standard just normal shiny eh, uh, i guess if they are a gx they're full art well uh, not necessarily <laughs> well, well actually oh you're yeah never mind you're right what am i talking about hidden fates yeah obviously no <laughs> did you pick up anything oh boy adam um okay how many Look, and of what? We don't talk numbers. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you know that better than anybody. Uh, but let's just say I, I'm milking a few tens of Hidden Fates. Um, but I've also been dabbling in trying to finish my Unbroken Bond set. And I have some Unified Mind packs sitting around that I need to open. But I, I'm I'm waiting on those. Um but out of a couple Unbroken Bonds packs that I opened up last night uh, with Val, uh, we pulled a cool-looking tag team card. It's a Feramosa and Buzzwool. Ooh, that's GX pretty sweet. tag team. Um, Rainbow edition. Oh, Rainbow. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, I don't know either one of these Pokemon, which bums me out. Yeah, um, they're both Ultra Beasts from Sun and Moon. Of course. Of course. Um, pretty pretty cool looking card, though, Adam, I must say. It's uh, quite... Yeah, the Rainbow cool. Rares are... They look so sexy. Yeah, I love them. I love them. So that's my second... Well, there you go. That's your flex. That's a flex card. Of the tag team Rainbow that's cards. That's the, true, the truest form right. of flex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the golds are up there too, but you know. Um, and then right before came upstairs to record, we opened up a ten of the Hidden Fates, and uh, I brought a pack to open here on air because that's what I do. Um, but we got two pulls from the other three packs in the ten that I want to tell you about. Uh, one of which is a shiny Noibat. Ooh. It's uh, very, very adorable. I love it. Um, the second one 
is a full art shiny bonnet. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I love that shiny bonnet. It's awesome looking. It is super rad. I love it. Uh, so pretty pleased with that. Um, but let's open a pack, Adam, see what happens, huh? Uh, then you pull the shiny charts. <laughs> I will just immediately leave the podcast, folks, and let Adam and Amiibo that. Jason. Yeah. Oh God. Hack and pulls one. That guy, right? How? <laughs> right. Of course it's him. Of of all. Here the we are opening we so many packs between the two of us. Yeah. And neither of us get one. Yeah. That guy, man. He has more. But luck. you might get one right now. Let's see. Um. Shout out to Ken for the wonderful audio of the pack opening. I know he loves it so much. Uh, we got a code card here. Uh, 64GV4VL2PTD2Y. Code card. Good luck, everybody. Um, all right. Let's see what we have here, Adam. Starting off with Fire Energy. Oh, speaking of which, one of the packs I opened the other night, I think it was an Unbroken Bonds pack. I can't. Or it might have been Hidden Fates. One of the two. Um, it had five energy cards in it. Is that normal? No. Is that weird to you? Yes. Okay, because I did like the, Very weird. the four card trick, and the first one is always the energy. Did that. Next one, energy. Huh. Energy. 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 Five cards, Adam. All energies. Now, was this a, a booster pack you yep. grabbed from? No. Just one? No. It was in, like, uh -huh. a late trainer box? Mm -hmm. That is so weird. Yeah. I Like I said, I can't remember if it was in the Unbroken Bonds or one of the Hidden Fate tens, But, yeah, it wasn't just a single random pack. Yeah, that's unusual. Did you at least get your rare and reverse hollow? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that didn't okay. interrupt that. Jeez. It's just, I was like, well, I guess if somebody needs energies. That's a cool thing. But yeah, the first time it's ever happened. It was very bizarre. Um, anyway, fire energy. Uh, we have a Brox Peter City Gym, Giovanni's Exile. When's he coming to Pokemon Go? Huh? Koga Strap. Who knows? Slowpoke. Clefairy. Jigglypuff. Caterpie. Eevee. We have a electric energy hollow. Fancy. Oh boy. We pulled a Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't I think you'd be like, alright, podcast is over, podcast is over, I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta not go. Quite. <laughs> um it is the legendary bird trio tag team full art card though what the one i don't have bah, bah, bah. not the rainbow but still that is cool what a sexy card adam what a sexy card Let me... yeah how how does how does that work so last week i pulled a rainbow uh -huh. this week i pulled a normal one yeah i put it on insta booster like what and then you just pulled a full art that's sick yeah nice i uh did not have this card yet, so let's leave this up right here real quick. Woo! What a card, man. Those birds, I tell you. Um, yeah, so that was a pretty good tin, Adam. In that tin, got the shiny Noibat, the shiny Bennett Full Art GX, and the Full Art Legendary Trio. So, not That bad. is not bad at all. Not bad. You guys got to be a part of it with me. Wouldn't have it any other way. Um, Adam, have we ever done a giveaway on this podcast? Not yet, no. no. I've opened up a few tins. I have some extra uh, Raichu and Gyarados of the promo GX cards, you know? Oh, yeah? I want to give one away. How do you want to do it? Um, I want... I, I You know what? Here's what we do. I'll give somebody one of each, a Raichu and a Gyarados. I give you a, Char a Charizard, but I only have a couple of them. Those tens are hard to find, folks. I don't know if you notice this or not. The other ones, not so much. Nobody wants those. Everybody wants a Charizard. But I have an extra Raichu and a Gyarados. 
Um, I think this podcast, what, we're, what, eight episodes in now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's time that we started getting some iTunes reviews. It would help the show a lot. Um, it would help us expand our audience a little bit. So I'm just asking that somebody, everybody out there listening, go on to iTunes, submit a quick review, give us five stars because that's the best stars. Uh, but you don't have to. You honestly don't have to. Would we appreciate it? Absolutely. Not required for the giveaway. Uh, but yeah, just submit a review of this show. Um, help us uh, get a little bit more notice out there in the community, the Pokemon community, the TCG community. Once you do that, either email us or um, get a hold of us on the Discord or... Uh, on Twitter or however you want to get a hold of us and let us know that you submitted a review. Let us know what name you used for the review so we could keep track of it. Um, and then we'll go through and we'll pick one of the the reviewers next week and give away those two cards. I'll send them out via, I, I guess, USPS. I don't, I don't know. I've never sent out cards before. Yeah, I think, yeah. I'll bubble wrap USPS. them and everything. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you just throw it loosely in the bubble wrap. Yeah, like, eh, it'll make I'll it. Slap them in an envelope, no sleeve, and just hope it gets there. It should be fine. Oh no! Uh, don't. That's the worst. <laughs> no, I'll cardboard it. I'll make it all nice and pretty, and make sure you, they get there uh, in in perfect condition. So yeah, how about that? Let's do that. I like it. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah. Can I win? Um. Yeah, I, I got you covered. Regardless. You could submit a review, though. I'm not going to stop you, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it to the the listening audience out there as far as winning is concerned. All right. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All righty. Uh, oh, the email is, um, what is our email? Specialconditionstcg at gmail.com. That's right. Send them that way, folks. By next week. Send them next, that way. Next Monday. We'll go from there. Get them in there. Yeah. And if we don't get a lot, maybe we'll extend it an extra week. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So that's all. Not a, a few other pickups. I'm not going to tell you about all my shinies, Adam. I could only spend so much time in my day talking about shinies. You know what I mean? I do. Between shiny cards. And... Uh, well, well, did you get any whoopers or quagsires? I did get a shiny whooper, yes. Not quagsire, but I did get a shiny whooper. So. Well, if you get any extras, oh, okay. I, I don't want the one that the only one you have. Yeah. But if you get any extras, oh, has your name on it. My I will trade you. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a good day for shinies. Let's just say that. All right. What do you bring in to to ask me today? What is the question you've got for me? Okay. Well, I came up with this question last week when we were talking, and I, I immediately wrote it down because I didn't want to forget it because I feel like it's an important thing to know. Um, decks. Do you know what the other person that you are playing against has in their deck? Is there any sort of like anything you have to show or tell the other person as far as which cards you have? Um, how does that all work? No. So you are not supposed to know what your opponent has. Okay. The only way that you can gain, you know, some knowledge is if they do a mulligan. A mulligan is if in the first seven cards that they draw for your starting hand, mm -hmm. you don't have a basic Pokemon. Okay. You have to show your hand to your opponent. The, those seven? Yep. Okay. To prove, because you, you could just be like, oh, I don't have any basics. Sure. You're just like, because you, because the one that you're starting with isn't the one you wanted. Right, right, right. Um, so, you know, you show your hand, oh, oh, they're all fire energies. Like, okay, so he's... so instantly you're like okay cool i know i'm playing fire i've got quagsire i'm water right i've got the advantage okay so if they or vice versa you could be playing they, they could show you water energies and you have fire and you're like oh no <laughs> i mean can you how do you strategize at at that point like that must be tough right yeah it, it causes a lot of stress because well a lot of pressure because you have to make moves precisely right like or you know you have to do the right move so maybe instead of going you know for fire like you you might have a snorlax in your deck mm -hmm. the snorlax and evgx so you search for that to kind of give you a little cushion so you're not 
just one shotted sure hmm. by a water type that can hit for 240 damage or something like that for the three energies. Gotcha. So if they don't do a mulligan, then there's no way to know until they start playing their cards, right? Correct. And then you're, I mean, you're locked in at that point anyway. So yes. And then once you flip, because then you, you know, you shake hands, you roll, you flip a coin. Whoever gets, you know, call makes the call. Um, they get to choose who goes first. Usually, you want to say you go first, just because it gives you the advantage to either attack first or evolve first. Okay. So there's there's tons of benefits. Sure. Whoever goes second can attack, but unless you're using something like uh, Pikachu Zekrom. It it really doesn't matter. Right. So, say you're going to a tournament. Okay. Um, a couple different questions regarding this scenario. I mean, if you're just playing with your friends, whatever, it doesn't matter, obviously. If you go into a tournament, do people bring multiple decks to play? Or do you only have to... Sometimes. Okay. Like, I have one or two decks that I usually like have built at a time. Mm-hmm. And if I walk in there and I'm like, Whoa, everyone's, everyone's playing like a totally different deck than I anticipated. Right. I might change it there, but you only get to pick one deck for the entire tournament. So, Oh, okay. So you do you choose, have to set your deck before you start the tournament. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Whatever 60 cards you go in with, that's what you have to come out with. Okay. So you can't like have like a water deck and then you lose a, a match and you're like, nah, I'm going over to my dark deck. Yeah. You can't do that. Okay. No. So you, that is against the rules. <laughs> so then you do have to register them with like a judge or something. And yep. So you fill out a deck list and you write all the cards that are in it and then you hand it to the judge. They hold on to it. So at any moment, they could just go random deck check. And they could look at your deck, and if it doesn't match up, or you have like extra cards or something like that, there's penalty penalties and different things they do. So when you submit your list, do you, do they look through your cards at that same time? Not at that exact moment. Okay. Once the tournament starts, and there's no judge calls or anything like that, like the tournament organizers, you know, or the judges will start looking at them and gotcha making sure that each deck list has 60 cards and if there's any discrepancies like if there's if they can see visually that it's like 62 cards Mm -hmm. or 61 they're going to call that person out almost immediately right because it's an illegal deck right or they might have a legal deck but not a a legal deck list sure they're like in their hands they might have 60 cards but they wrote down 61 by accident right that's no good yeah and then vice versa so i mean so they really do random deck checks though, or is it just yep. when like an opponent? And then usually for like top cut, they make sure everybody's decks that they have going into top cut are those exact decks. Right. And for higher scale tournaments, they usually like hold, the judges hold on to those those decks, sure. so like they can make sure every single deck has all sixty cards. No funny business. All the sleeves, there's nothing marked or anything like that. Right. Hmm. No magicians with sleight of hand switching in and out cards or anything. Exactly. At any point, like if you're playing somebody and you notice something funny about their deck, could you like throw a flag on the play and like have their deck inspected, like challenge it? Um, th- there's like things that happen in the game state. So like, I draw a card for my turn and I do a couple things, but I'm like, oh, I forgot to draw a card for my turn. Mm-hmm. And you like know that your opponent's already drawn, and they draw anyways. Mm-hmm. Then you have to call a judge, and then it comes down to: Do you remember what card, like where that card was in their hand? Right. And if not, if they like shuffled their hand, then like that's like a a very big issue. <laughs> sure. Um, and they and each level of tournament has a certain level of severity for the penalties. Right. So, like, the higher up you go, if you made that mistake, you might just get a game loss. Okay. So, if you're doing best two out of three, you're already down. You have to win two. Sure. Uh, but, I okay, so I, I guess my question is more along the lines of, like, say you've seen your opponent already play four Pinsir GXs, right? And, and right. in your head, you're just keeping a running track of, like, what deck they have and, and what cards they've shown. And then you see a fifth one come out. 
like now that's a big deal okay so that's would you, like could you challenge it at that point like so you call like a judge yes. over yeah yeah you just raise your hand and you call a judge just kind of like you're in school okay you're like okay. teacher <laughs> did the teacher i got i got an issue hmm okay and then they'll go through their deck at that point yes and if they do in fact have the five I, I'm pretty sure that's an illegal that that, that becomes an illegal deck right, at that point. Right. So that could possibly cost them the whole tournament, right? Yes, yeah. Especially if that was like, you know, you need to win the last the next match in order to be able to make top cut. Mm-hmm. Then yes, like that's a big deal. So that's like that becomes a tough tough decision because whoever wins that match guaranteed top top eight you know top 16 whatever right so it's a tough call on the judges too because they have to they have to see like oh was it intentional was it not Hmm. but yeah there's a lot of like different scenarios i remember when i was i i was in my i think second year or first i'll I'll say second year of playing (laughs) okay so like 2009 they were doing battle road tournaments so if you won or you got second place or third they gave out pikachu metal cards and then they turned into typhlosion like but basically they were just the same trainer card they all said the same thing they just had different art okay and i just remember this one tournament so vividly i was playing a deck and multiple games it didn't just happen once. Um, it was like my first match. You know, I shuffled up. I was ready to go. I got my basic out. And then I did Celio's Network, which allowed me to search my deck for a Pokemon. And then I played it down, shuffled my deck, and my opponent's like, you have no prizes. And so I already started off on the wrong foot. So my opponent got a free prize. And then it happened again. Oh no! And I was like, this can't be happening. Like, how am I forgetting this? And since that day, I've never forgotten my prizes. Right, right. But it happened three times. It happened the first and the second match. And then my next match was fine. And then the next match I forgot. And I was, like, heartbroken that, like, I could be forgetting that much. And, like, the last match where, like, I didn't put, I didn't have them out, my opponent got a penalty, too, for not, like, announcing that, like, hey, you don't have your prize cards. Put those out real quick. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, okay, clearly he's had an issue putting his prizes out. Somebody needs to, you know, say something. Right. <sighs> it's an emotional thing to talk about because yeah. it's so embarrassing. Right. But well, it happened, and I got over it. And, and you've never done it again. Moving forward, no. Exactly. You learn something, and that's all. That's important. I've forgotten to take a prize. Okay. But not to put them out. Sure. <sighs> well. I'm glad you've recovered from that emotionally and yeah. I mean, it was it was like ten years sure. ago, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay now. Okay, good. I think good. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that was that was what I was wondering about decks and what you know beforehand and how that's all. Yeah, so official. I mean, there's trainer cards. There's like Lavender Town right now. So if it's a stadium, if you play it, you 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 get to look at your opponent's hand. Okay. So you there's there's cards that you can find out what your opponent's playing mm-hmm. um like there's a uh, poltergeist from gengar mimikyu gx you look at your opponent's hand for each trainer card in there it does you know however much damage i think it's 30 or 50 something like that but you play lavender town and you can see their hand so before you attack you just know you're like okay well you've got three so i can i can definitely knock out that pokemon right so there's there there are cards that work in synergy and like let you know what your opponent has um but still i mean you you can find out playing it though i mean that 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 was the thing i i I guess i was just before you start playing you don't know sure no that's the short answer okay you're not supposed to know but after the first round if you know that person and you see what cards they're playing right you can get a, a basic gist of what they're running right you see a bunch of Malamars on the deck. You're like, oh, they're playing Malamar. It, do people ever like have like friends scout like yes opponents so they'll know what decks yep. are coming and 
yeah, and, and there are some, you know, local shops, like especially the ones that I go to, there's not a lot of space. Mm-hmm. So when you're done a match, you you know, you walk down the the row of people playing and, you know, you you look for, you know, what what's being played and Sure. If you see a lot of red or yeah, if you see a lot of red, right. you're like, "Oh, there's tons of fire. Right. I'm running water. That's a good thing." Mm-hmm. Um or if you you see a lot of yellow, you're like, "Oh, they're playing Pikachu Zekrom." Or you see a lot of shine and you're like, "Oh, that, and you're like, I don't even know what deck that was. Yeah. All I saw was hyper rares galore and gold trainer cards. Josh must be in the building. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Flex deck. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, thank you, Adam. You're very welcome. And speaking of decks, let's talk about one that came out of Unified Minds. Okay. It's not the first of its style, but it's kind of like a, a hit and run. Okay. So it it'll te- like there's just pokemon that hit and then they go to the bench or they go back to the deck or something of that nature forcing you to promote another pokemon that's on your bench to the active so whatever pokemon you're attacking with doesn't necessarily get attacked doesn't get knocked out doesn't is not in harm's way because you can only attack the active okay and so the card we're talking about is behem I think that's how you say it. Behe, behe, yem, behe, yem. I'm so glad. Behe, yem, behe, yem. I don't know. You, you say so, so many of them, like so well that, like, I, I'm happy to hear that you don't know how all of them are pronounced perfectly. Yeah, I, this one literally, it's an alien. Okay. It's an alien and behem. Behem. That's what I want to call sure. it. Behem. Yeah, that works. But it's behe. Yeah. Yeah. Behem. Behem. There's a few extra letters. It seems <laughs> All right. Like. I, I won't be able to say it. But so for one, it's a stage two. So I mean, or stage one. So which means that it has to go from a basic to the evolution. So it has 80 HP. Not impressive. Okay. For It's a psychic type Pokemon. Times two weak to psychic. One retreat cost. For one psychic, it does Psy Punch for 20. And here is the the main reason for the the being okay mysterious noise similar to the noise uh-huh. it's spelled wrong but i know yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's called mysterious noise it's for three colorless energies okay it does 90 damage okay shuffle this pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during their next turn oh so trainer lock is a big deal okay this deck got used against me multiple times <laughs> and it is tough. It is tough to come to be able to work around not being able to play your trainers mm-hmm. or your items. Right. So you have mysterious treasures to go search for Pokemon. You can't use, you have Pokemon communication to search for Pokemon and you can't use it. You have custom catchers to draw cards or to bring out a different Pokemon. You can't use it. Hmm. It makes for some interesting times yeah, it it feels like it's just there to disrupt the flow of things. Yes, but the attack actually does a ton of damage. It does 90. So two turns, you're doing 180. Three, you're doing 270. That That's enough to knock out a Reshiram Charizard. It's enough to knock out a Keldeo GX. That's crazy. Speaking of Keldeo GX, uh-huh. well, I mean, well, regardless of that, we talked about them last week. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So there is a special energy card from Unbroken Bonds called Triple Acceleration Energy. Yes, I've seen a couple of those. And it says, this card provides three colorless energy only while it is attached to an evolution Pokemon. So there you go. Boom. Hmm. BEM. One card. There's the there's three, three energies. So that's one energy. Mm-hmm. That's one turn of attachment. And it gets you the, the attack cost. And it says, if this card is attached to anything other than an evolution Pokemon, discard this card. And it has to be discarded at the end of the turn. Okay. So it's like a quick boost up. It's like an energy drink. Here, you get boost up real quick, and then you crash. Mm -hmm. So with this, in combination, the attack and all the effects happen. And so it gets shuffled back into the deck. So you don't actually lose your energies. Hmm. So everything gets shuffled in. Okay. And now, here's where the deck gets kind of crazy. So there are different Pokemon that you can use as walls. Um, So every Pokemon has an energy requirement Uh to use their attacks. 
So the next card on the list is Gumi. Okay. And this one says sticky membrane. As long as this Pokemon's your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon, all their attacks cost one colorless extra. Okay. So that means, you know, your three energy attack. Now you need four. Okay. So it's basically stall tactics. Hmm. So you stop them from using energies Mm -hmm. or items. You stop them from using items and then you require them to have an additional energy just to knock you out. <laughs> huh. Okay. I see. I see where this is going. And then if it's a tag team or a GX deck, there's an Alolan Ninetales mm. with Luminous Barrier. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX. Interesting. So, oh, hold on. You can't play items? Oh, and your GX? You can't hit me. So can I tell you how annoying this deck yeah, is? Yeah, what do you do? How do you and what do you do against and this And you deck? play Pidgeotto, and Pidgeotto lets you look at the top two cards mm-hmm. and then put one at the bottom. Okay. And you can play Professor Elm's training method, and he lets you search for three Pokemon with sixty HP or less, mm-hmm. and Pidgeotto has sixty, mm-hmm. and it evolves from Pidgey, so you can go search for like two Pidgeys and a Pidgeotto. So like, it's just consistent draw. Okay. And you're just churning out your deck so frequently. The hardest part is getting the stream of BMs. Right. Because you have to have the eye gleam down and then be able to evolve and attach the energy every single turn. Because if you break that lock, your opponent's just going to tr- like roll through you. Yeah. And that's the hardest part about this deck is that if it happens, you're pretty much done sure. for. Yeah, you can't recover from that because it's t- too weak. Right. Yeah. And it's like, if they knock out your not Alolan Nine Tails with something other than their GX, then you're stuck with just Gumi. But then they, you know, they then they bring up their GX and they can start attacking. Yeah. And it gets ugly quick. Yes. Huh. Hmm. Okay. So is this something you're interested in toying around with? Yes. Very much so. Okay. Yeah. This and uh, Weavile GX. Dark deck right. is kind of like my my next branch out. That's what I want to go for. Mm. But I need more Weavals. Sure. And I need one more Behem. Behem. Well, uh, when I start opening up the those packs, I will set one aside for you if I find it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Of course. Cool. Well, I'm excited for that. Me too. Yeah. All right. And then we last, we have a listener email. James C. writes, After hearing you guys talk about sleeves, I just wanted to share what I do. I 100% am on Adam's side on Dragon Shields. They are amazing sleeves and are high quality. I shuffle hard and have only ripped a few of them. They usually come in a box of 100 sleeves, so I always have extra. Now, I was recently showed the Perfect Fit sleeves. Mm -hmm. I love them! If a hobby shop card store sells normal sleeves... They should have perfect fits. He goes on to say Batcave, CCG House will have them for Josh. Okay. So if you're in that area, uh-huh. you can find them there. Okay. Um, they are clear, and I don't know if you can get colored ones, maybe online, but I haven't looked. Thank you. Yeah. I I love the perfect fit sleeves, but they are they're clear. So when we when we talked about our sleeves, it's one of those like if you have a ding on any of your cards, like and it's very noticeable, even in the slightest. If somebody picks up on that while you're playing in a tournament, it makes it really hard right. to like because then you'd have to have a replacement for that exact card. So if you're playing a hyper rare or something, and nobody in the building has another hyper rare that you can play, because this one has like a ding on the back or something that very distinguishable. It, it makes it very hard to justify buying the perfect fit sleeves if your deck isn't 100% mint. Sure, that makes sense. So although I like them for like collecting purposes, I don't like them for playing purposes. Mm, okay. All right, question time. This one's for you, Josh. Okay. What will happen first? You completing a full set of cards or are you making your first deck? Oh, boy. Uh, are we talking about like a physical deck? 
Okay. Yeah, and I don't think a structure deck counts. Okay. You can't buy okay. a structure deck and then say, oh, well, I changed I changed out two cards. Done. I really wanted to play my flex Done. cards. Because uh, I'm really getting antsy about starting um, on the online version of the game. So I, I don't know if that factors into it or not. But if we're talking about physical cards, I am getting dangerously close to the full set of Unbroken Bonds. So I feel like I might complete a set first. Before I make a full deck, only because I still don't really know what to do with like a full deck yet of physical cards. So pr- probably collecting a whole set. I I can see yeah. that. But and I can also see you buying a structure deck and then <laughs> putting in a couple gold cards and saying, "Hey, hey I built a deck, guys." <laughs> You're so proud. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You never know. And then he goes on to say, Adam. I watched some World's Championship, and I noticed there were a few times where players got penalized for prize cards, which made them lose. Can you elaborate at all? Static penalties, judgment calls, etc. Also, Welder seems overpowered. Yes, Welder is overpowered. Touch two fires and draw three cards, and then attach another fire, and then you turn, like, two can attack with anything that uses fire energies. Yes, broken. (laughs) What Um, set is Welder from? Is it a trainer card, I'm guessing? It's a supporter, so you can only play one supporter a turn. Okay. But it's still overpowered because you get to draw and you get to extra attach. Okay. But what which set though is it from? Uh, Unbroken Bones. Oh. And so, as far as the prize cards and penalties, so when you're at a competition like Worlds, every little mistake, every hiccup, every misplay, everything is watched with an eagle eye. Mm-hmm. And your opponents, if they're playing and you're actually in worlds and you got your invite, those players didn't make it there by accident. They all know exactly what cards to play and when and how. So if you attach two energies during your turn and you can only attach one per turn, that's a really big deal. So you will be penalized accordingly. So because if you attach two energies that turn, and you were able to knock something out because of it, that, like that's totally unfair. Sure. Um, and so they make their calls based on this the level of the event and the severity of what happened. And sometimes they can reverse the game state. I know, like I wasn't watching it a hundred percent, and I haven't gone back to watch it all. But I know if they can't reverse the game state, then they have to make some sort of judgment call. And that's that's a tough spot to be in. Um, I I was I did see like on stream, uh, I think it was like Pidgeotto stall or something like that, and it was like they're making plays and doing things, but they're not actually doing anything. Um, Josh, I know you're not you don't understand what I'm no, saying, no, but I'm, like I'm, I'm, I got the gist. They'll use it. they'll like use Pidgeotto. Like look at the top two, choose one, put it on the bottom, and then next they'll do another Pidgeotto. Look at the top two, put one down, and they're 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 still making plays, so they're not technically stalling, mm-hmm. but they are slow like stalling because they're not actually doing anything. They're not advancing in any way, right? And then they'll play like Mars, and you draw two cards, and then your opponent discards a card, and then they use resource management with a Rangaroo, so they'll put three cards from their discard back at the bottom of their deck and then they'll Pidgeotto and then they'll Pidgeotto and then they'll Pidgeotto. So it's like, Oh my God, stop. (laughs) So, and like, they basically control your hand. They control what you're drawing because they have chip, chip ax. I don't know exactly what it does. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure it like looks at the top three and then you just reorganize Mm -hmm. them or discard the top one and organize the other two, something like that. Uh, but yeah, back to the question. It it just ma- like it matters what was done in the game. So if they took two prize cards when they're only supposed to take one, and then they shuffle their hand, it like that card is now mixed in with their hand. So the judge has to make a call. Like I, we can't determine what card that was that you drew. Right. And I'm I'm guilty of shuffling my hand all the time. Like I'm always like. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't ever keep it still. Sure. So, 
it, it, it's it's just tough calls that have to be made at that high of a level of play. Which yes, some end up in game losses, and and that's just the way it is. Right. Um, I don't know. I can't speak to any specific penalty that was given out, but I do know that they wouldn't make those calls unless it was warranted. Yeah. And, that, and um, like honestly, like at a tournament at like Worlds, like that's, I mean. You can't make mistakes at that level, right? Like, right. And then if you're playing on stream, like, you're on stream. Yeah. You're being watched yeah. by thousands of people. Yeah. They have to enforce those. And if so- and if and if somebody in the chat is like catching the fact that like, oh, he did this wrong, yeah. or you know, he just drew an extra card. Like, as soon as that gets back to the judge, or as soon as like, the judge notices. Mm that's like that's a game changer yeah. and if so many turns went past and it wasn't caught until later on it, it's unfortunate but like it, it, that still happened yeah. so they have to take a penalty at that point yeah i mean they have to preserve the integrity of the game or else exactly what are we all doing here yeah. right it, it's this is such a good question because it's so hard to answer because there's just so <laughs> many variables that go into a judge right. call yeah like i got i got one prize card for me for getting my prizes the first game okay. so like my opponent already was had like was winning and then the second game my opponent got two prize cards or three because like it was just the way it was i don't i don't remember exactly the call but it was like they got three prizes and then the next one was like okay it was a game loss like you have now you have to win and you can't win on time so i had to win two out of the three matches so it was like it was just tough sure hmm. and and like i i can't make those calls right. but i know when i do something wrong you know and i get called on it like okay yeah. no, nobody likes Honest to be mistake, it happened. but i mean everybody understands like it has to happen yeah it exactly, sucks, and it's like but... some that that happened a lot with uh, Garbodor. They people would use their abilities, but his ability says you can't use your ability. <laughs> but but it's also up to you if you're the Garbodor player to know that. Oh, they played an ability. Yeah. You should know that that doesn't right. work. Yeah. So what are you doing, letting them play your ability? Right. If you don't know how to play, they your play own it. Cards, it doesn't work. You shouldn't be playing them. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. it's complicated yeah this this was such a good question man we need more of these questions yeah. that like gets me all like riled up <laughs> not riled up but like excited it's just it's so hard to like get out what i'm trying yeah. to say because it, it it just there's just too many variables right. right there's so many different judge calls there's so many different scenarios where different things have to be adjusted it, basically if you can reverse the game state and it's like a slap on the wrist like like oh i drew a card but it's right here in my hand at that moment like if you can put it back on the deck and you flip it over so your opponent gets to see what that card is because you already know what that card is so it's public knowledge at that point um or if like you take a pro like you know you you retreat but you only retreated one energy and you needed to retreat two like it's it's reversible mm-hmm. If the game state is reversible, it's not that big of a deal. Sure. It still happened, yes. So it's like a slap on the wrist first time, right. second time it becomes a higher penalty. And that's how the tournaments that I go to or like the smaller events, that's how they they're looked at, you know. Oh, slap on the wrist, don't don't do that. Next match, oh, okay, you did that again. Now it's a prize loss. Yeah. Oh, you did that again, it's a game right. loss. Like clearly you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> So yeah, and it, it's just it just looks like sure. that on paper, if you yeah. will. But I mean, at some point, I mean that that's how people learn um, is by making mistakes, and um, yeah, that's what they have judges for, I suppose. Yes, and th- thank you so much, James, for writing yeah. in. Like, honestly, if you guys, I appreciate those questions. Yeah, if you want to be like James, you should send in an email as well. Uh, Tales or special conditions tcg at gmail.com 
for a second there, it was a different podcast. Almost no. a different <laughs> podcast. Yeah. 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 Or you could um, leave us a voicemail, a text, a picture at 732-835-8639. Yeah. If you pull a shiny Charizard uh, from a hidden face pack, like you should be texting us immediately. Just send it right on over. Yeah. <laughs> Or don't, because then I'd be yeah. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> or just let us know how, how much it sold for on yeah. eBay, okay? Like, we just want to know how much money just you take made. take a picture of your bank account <laughs> afterwards, and yeah, good times. Or just or just send us some. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> no. <laughs> just send us some via Patreon. Uh... Oh, we've gone too far now. Yeah, we've gone too far. All right. You got anything else, Josh? Uh... No, that's it, man. I had another fun episode, and I'm just excited to open a few more packs before next week. So. Excellent. All right, guys. Remember, if you're affected by a special condition, don't forget to use a full heal. Thanks for listening.